fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today. I want to talk to you guys about landlocked salmon. A lot of our fisheries around here have a lot of them in there. Uh, Berryessa, Orville has some record-sized fish that are coming out of there. And um, I was actually, when I trolling for kokanee in Berryessa, I was probably catching maybe one a trip if I was lucky, you know, by accident. So I didn't think there was a big population. I know they do a lot of planting there. They have them in the pins there and they release them. But nobody really knows how many were in there. Well, last year when I was actually spooning for bass, I was catching a lot of these landlocked salmon before the lake turned over. And basically I was catching them. They were feeding with the bass, you know, all the shad, they were on the big bait balls. And then what happened was the lake turned over. So once the lake turns over like that, your bait fish will start moving up more higher in the water column. So throwing these spoons when these salmon, cause I could see them on the graph. So these salmon were up in the bait balls in 20 to 30 feet of water, suspended, while trying to get a spoon to stay in that depth range is almost impossible. So I wasn't catching any, but I could see them. So, you know, I'm thinking back, and I remember probably back in the early 80s, uh, my brother did a lot of ocean fishing, and I was doing a lot of tournament bass fishing, and there was this lure called a Gitsit, which is a tube bait like this. and. He asked me, he goes, hey, can I try some of them on rockfish? So he's over at Bodega Bay using these gitsits and he was catching the hell out of salmon. So we just, we, then we went, we targeted them. We actually would go out there and catch more salmon on these things than faster than any other bait that you could ever drop down there. And what it, what it basically you do when you fish this is you're dead sticking it. So we took it into the Sacramento River, the Feather River, we caught salmon on it. And then the ocean, they changed the regulations. So if you're drifting in the ocean, you can't use a regular hook. You have to use a circle hook. So they don't make a jig head with a circle hook. And we tried making a few and we were very unsuccessful. And then we kind of like gave up on it because when you use a circle hook, you can't set the hook. It's totally different type of fishing. So anyway, I dug out some gitsits and I go back to Berryessa and I do the same thing that we were doing in the ocean and I smoked them, and I couldn't believe it. It was just unbelievable. I could never imagine how many fish were in that lake. Um, I took a couple reps out, and these guys are avid steelhead salmon fishermen, and they were just mind blown. They couldn't believe it. They said, we would never imagine that the fishing could ever be like this. So this year, I can't wait to do it again. And last year, I was didn't tell a whole lot of people about it, and I didn't, do any seminars on it because I was still learning myself, but it, it was a phenomenal year. In January and February, I caught so many salmon. And the problem with this is when you go, a lot of times when you hook those fish and they're so wild and they fight really good, and you get them in a boat, you net them, scales are all coming off, it's hard to release them. So when you catch your limit, I would suggest just getting your five fish and then Finally, if you keep trying to release them and stuff, you're gonna see them floating around the boat. So just kind of keep it cool. Um, last year, there was some gang wardens out there watching the guys because they were, they, you know, you can't, I think if you turn them loose and they float, they're gonna get in trouble. So just be careful. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some of the stuff about this kind of fishing. Number one is the bait. You have to do this to your bait. So I use either anchovies or herring. I use blue label because they're the biggest. I would use the biggest one that you can possibly find. So what I do is I thaw this out and I fillet it just like you would a sardine, like you would for striper fishing. And then go to the store and get me some rock salt that you make ice cream. You know, you want the salt with the big chunk. And I lay, so like if there's three of three people in my boat, I'll take probably five of these anchovies, lay them out. So I have 10 sides, I lay, it on, lay the meat on the rock, put it in an ice box. And then when you get up in the morning, I take the piece and I cut it. Take a scissors and I cut a piece that big. That's all you need. If you don't put this on your hook, you're not gonna get bit. 
you have to put this on. Friends of mine squirted with scent and everything and try it, but it don't work like this. Something about this, and when you put this on it gets it, it doesn't hang any further than the skirt. So it's gonna be like that. So somehow since, and, and as a fisherman, I fish for everything that swims and I don't use scent. The only time you would ever see me put scent on is if I'm getting my butt whooped. Otherwise I won't put it on. Then I have to borrow it because I don't have any. So basically this little strip and I tried it without it and you won't get bit. So you gotta have that piece of bait on there. Just like that, very simple. But you have to cure it. If you don't cure it and you put it on, as soon as you get one tap, it's gone. So I found out that the tougher I can make this, because what the salt does, it draws the moisture out of the bait, it gets tough. So they can't get it off. So a lot of times, you know, by if it's not cured right, it just comes off and you won't catch them. You might get one out of three or one out of five. Where if you do it like this and you, you do it like I'm gonna teach you today, then you'll catch them. As far as equipment, um, I use eight pound tests. You wanna use a rod with a super light tip. So basically you're gonna, I put this thing in a rod holder. I very rarely hold it and I use two rods. So I'll stick one and then I might use a different color or a different size gets it, but this is the one that works the best. I'll stick it in a rod holder and you're gonna see the rod pop one time like that. What they do is when salmon feed, they're gonna, your gets is gonna be like this. And you wanna tie, you do not use a swivel, you tie it tight and you pull the line straight up from the eye so it sits vertical. You want that jig just like this in the water. And what happens is salmon, they always speed up. I'm an avid user of a fish finder. I wouldn't go fishing if I didn't have one. I would feel so lost. So I could, I graph the bait. I see the marks going through the bait. Say I see it at 25 feet. I'm gonna put this down 22 feet. I put it down till it's right on top of the bait. Salmon always feed going up. So when they hit this thing, they hit it and up they go. So you're gonna see that tap on your rod. If you set the hook, you're gonna just set on air, like, you, like your lure fell off. So sometimes when a fish, I mean, if you guys are fishermen, there's sometimes when it doesn't matter what you do, you can't miss them. And there's some days when you set the hook like crazy and you can never hook them. So basically when that rod taps like this, that fish is carrying this bait up. So basically I grab it out of the roller holder and I start reeling real slow. And as soon as I feel any tension, set the hook and you'll land them. So if you just left it in the rod holder and you saw it go like this, and then the rod will bend like that. And if they're suicidal, you'll catch them. And you're gonna notice that every one that you catch is gonna be on the top lip to the nose. Every one of them. Never on the side, always to the top. There's at times when that rod will go like this and bends like that and doing, they spit it out. Just like that, that quick. So you miss that opportunity. But if I saw that tick like that, you got probably like three to five seconds. So you pick the rod up, you start reeling, and as soon as you feel it, just slam it. You want a rod with a light tip with a little bit of backbone. So you could use your trolling rod that you use for kokanee, but if the rod bends from right here, then you, you'll probably miss a lot of them. You want something that's a little bit stiff here, but a light tip. Eight pound test line, don't use any, you can use six or eight. And I prefer eight because sometimes I'm catching them around a the dock. So I use eight pound test. I use a, anywhere from a quarter ounce to 3 16 The quarter ounce I'll fish down to 30 feet, and then if it's deeper, then I'll go to 3 16 a little bit heavier. Make sure you tie it. I use fluorocarbon. This is actually Yozuri. It's a copolymer that's fluorocarbon coated. So it's a little bit stiffer than monofilament. But as far as like your reel, something that'll just hold 100 yards of line is fine. I don't like to use spinning rods because the line gets twisted. And then when you drop this down, so any of your rods, if you go like this and then slack it up like that and the line is not straight, it's getting twisted or something, it's gonna make that get to do stupid things. It's gonna make it spin. It's gonna do cock it sideways. So you want something, so after you're out fishing, you let it down like that, you loosen your line. If it don't straight like, like that, you need change. Sometimes it's like if you went to a 100% fluorocarbon line, it's gonna be kinked. 
So that's why I like to use a, the copolymer that's coated with fluorocarbon because it's a lot softer. So just pay attention to that because I'm dead sticking this. No trolling, I'm on a trolling motor just to hold the boat still. I use my fish finders, I see them. I just installed a new live target on mine and I've only had it out like eight times. And that's gonna be a game changer. I can't wait to do this with that thing because I'll be able to see them and say, hey, get rid of that rod right there or get rid of that rod right there. I'll be able to tell you. So this is a, gonna be a, it's an awesome fishery and there's tons of them out there. So like if you, if you're, how many of you guys fish for salmon? Landlock. You all troll, right? And do you ever slaughter them? You don't, because those, I found those fish to be scattered. One day I'll find them in 10 feet, one day I'll find them in 50 feet. So like when you're trolling, plus when you troll, you troll, and then by the time you turn around, they move a lot. A lot of times what I do, number one thing what I do at Berryessa is I watch for the birds. You know, the greaves that are on the top? You know what they eat? Shad. And I've even caught them on the Gitsu. So basically, those things are better than any fish finder that you could ever find on the market. So I go down the lake and usually this time of the year, I'll start around Big Island because you gotta remember during the fall, the shad migrate up north into the Puda Creek. They go into the main creek channel that feeds the lake and they spawn. So right now they're probably in the middle somewhere. And I heard there's some from right on the outside of Puda. So they're getting ready to make their move. So basically when the lake turns over, those shad will come off the bottom. So they're gonna come up, and as they come up, they come up in huge schools. That's when this kind of fishing is really productive. So you gotta have good electronics to find them or watch the birds. So a lot of times I'll watch the birds and if they're on a main cove where a main creek channel comes in, like you know our skiers, I killed them in skiers, I killed them in rag early because the fish, the shad were on the outside. I saw all kinds of birds, so I'd go graph them. And I'll graph in, graph in until I see them, watch the bait. And then when the bait's gone, I know how far they went. I'll come back out and start fishing. But you have to look around. If you waited till the end of January, then I would just tell you, go to put a bridge. I caught a lot of them at the bridge. I caught a lot of them a mile, two miles back. These are all my bass lures back in the day. And, I, and once in a while, I'll experiment but one rod will always have this one on it. I tell you, if you bought this one, this is the only one that you would need. But some days when they're real finicky, I'll go down to smaller sizes and drop down different colors. Um, this one was really productive for a while, but this is just a shad. You see this jig head right here? You see how the eyes in the center or back of the, of the weight of that jig? Easier to keep that thing vertical. So if the eye was in the front like a round head and you put it in there, it's gonna go like this. So you want the eye here. You're gonna notice that on some of these, you see how high the eye is protruding through the lead? That's perfect because when you poke it in this gets it, the bend of this hook is gonna go right where the it's shredded. So I put it in like this. And I put it right to where the cut part starts which is probably going to be real close about this far to the top just like that and then you just push down you see how it poke right through so some of these if you look at some of these jig as an eye is just on top of the lead you're gonna have a hard time because when you push it down the only way you could tie it is you got to pull down like that and then tie it on so there are some manufacturers that they're sticking out high those are the ones that work better but you want it just like this. So when you pull it and you put it in the water, that lure is going to sit vertical just like this. When they hit it like this, they carry it up. So it's coming up towards you. And they probably move 10 feet in two seconds. So like you, when if you set the hook on that rod, you're probably only picking up five feet of line. So if that fish came up and you swung, you're going to go, hey, where'd my lure go? You know, and it's in the fish's mouth that's 10 feet up further. See, so you, and at times what anybody could catch them because there's times when I've been out there when I get the bite and the rod just loads up and they're already hooked right through the nose. Well, I took two reps out and they were just flabbergasted. They, they, could, they couldn't even imagine. Because that's why I asked you how many you catch trolling because 
these guys are out there trolling and they're not doing very good. You know, they come by me at nine o'clock. I said, hey, Renee, I'm done. How many you got? Two, right? And I'm going, I told you, use a gets it. So the Nick, he comes to the store. I fix the guy up with this stuff. I go out there again and he's trolling it. <laughs> see, they don't, they just don't understand. See, by me telling you what, everything, how the fish react and everything, you could understand what I'm talking about. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.